Hey everyone, Steve Rosenberg here. How do you know that a tenant is actually taking care of your rental property? And what can you do to maybe mitigate the chances of your property getting trashed? So this is a very scary question to ask because sometimes you don't wanna know the answer because you've already got the tenant in the property and now you're asking the question. Obviously the time to ask that question is a lot sooner than what you may be thinking right now. Because the number one reason that you can do to make sure that your tenant is not trashing your property is proper screening. You put the right tenant in and a lot of these problems go away. See, a lot of times when we have a vacant property, we're emotionally nervous. So we're scared and we're thinking all the worst case scenarios of having a vacant property. I don't wanna pay the mortgage. I don't want it to be vacant. This is gonna go on forever and ever. So sometimes we maybe change the rules and maybe we accept someone we shouldn't or maybe we don't do the proper screening and we think someone's past is the past and they're not gonna repeat it. That is wrong. First of all, remember, you've got policies, procedures, and structure when you own a rental property and putting in the right tenant or the wrong tenant can make or break your whole business model. So the screening of the tenant is probably the most important thing that you gotta think about when it's time to ask yourself how to make sure your tenant's not gonna trash your property. The next thing is, is when you have any contractor or vendor at the property, I would ask them to give you an update on the property. How is it being taken care of? How many cars are in the driveway? Are there any pets at the property? Did you see how many people were living there? Now, you don't. they don't have to do an inspection, but they can give you an update. I've had re uh, rental properties where a maintenance person came back to me and said, there's about 20 people living in that house and there's about 10 cars on the grass in a nice neighborhood, didn't know anything about it. Then I had to start doing an inspection. I did an ins uh, a actual inspection and then I found out, yes, uh, the occupancy was way over the limit of what is legally allowed and what the screen, uh, what the lease allows. Next thing is, is you know, if you have a property manager, have them drive by the property if they're in the area. That's a great way to get an assessment just by looking at the outside, right? How are they taking care of it? Is the grass cut? Is it manicured? Are they taking care of, is there stuff laying around? These are indicators of what is going on. Now you can also actually do actual inspections and I recommend that you do periodic inspections of your property. You can do them every three months, six months, or nine months. Um, you don't wanna do them too often because there is a, a privacy law that you wanna respect. Um, and again, if you have the right person in the property, you don't need to worry about it as much but you also need to verify who, what they're doing in the property. Um, next thing I would suggest is taking before and after pictures of the property. Whenever you lease out your property, you should be taking a lot of pictures before and after because if you are ever in a situation that you have a security deposit dispute and you are fighting over them not getting the security deposit, the only thing you have is proof, proof before, and proof after. So take as many pictures as you can and this will help mitigate the chances of you not getting the deposit back. Uh, and lastly, I would say make sure that you're enforcing lease and HOA violations. If the tenant is violating the lease, you have to act on it. Remember, you have a contract. You don't have the option to enforce it. By contractual means, you are obligated to enforce a lease infraction or a violation. So these are indications that you may have a bigger problem. Do not ignore them. If you're getting letters from your HOA, your homeowners association, telling you that the property has a lot of debris and trash, these are red flags. Do not ignore these red flags. This could be a bigger issue and it could cost you a lot more money down the road by choosing to ignore it when the tenant moves out and you find out that they've trashed the property. So again, hopefully this helps you. And again, remember, it all starts by putting the right resident in. Remember, you're running a business. Treat it like a business with policies, procedures, and structure. And make sure that if there's any type of red flag, have a procedure set up so that you do some inspections, you start enforcing the lease, and you make sure that if there is a problem, you address it quickly and not after they move out. If you like this information, like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Steve Rosenberg. Go to my website, steverosenberg.com, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.